Talk. This is Yu Sai, and I'm in Los Angeles right now. And my guest today is a gorgeous, beautiful Kelsey Merritt. And I'm sure you guys know her already. But it's so <laughs> exciting for me today because this is our first time meeting, actually. But before we get into the nitty gritties about her, I want to thank everybody who's been supporting Let's Talk. For every guest that comes onto Let's Talk, we have been donating 500 masks to first responders. And today, wow. MJ Day at Sports Illustrated Swimsuit had personally donated over 15,000 masks to Manhattan VA Hospital. So That's thank amazing. you for being here with me today. Just being here today helped donating 500 masks. Oh my God, that's so, awesome. It's, and I know you're doing some uh, philanthropic work as well. You've been donating and sponsoring um, with other brands. Will you let us know a little yes. bit about that? Yeah, so I partner with um, this company called Bella Canvas and they're um, you know, partnering with a lot of um, influencers and they're um, do, uh, giving it to the charities that they choose. So that's awesome. You know, okay. I feel like now's the time to use your platform for good. And I feel like people are doing that. Absolutely. Well, let's get right into it. Kelsey, we never have met before, but we know about each other. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to know what you thought of me, but <laughs> I mean, you're you're a legend, you know. I you I would love to work with you someday. I hope MJ will put us in a shoot together. You you do your work is amazing and I can't believe we still haven't shot together. Well, you know, funny enough when your name came up um, MJ always asks me every year, who's on your bucket list that you would like to shoot this year? And the trip Philippine came up as well uh, as the Bali trip. And oh, yeah. I didn't know which girls were with on which trip. I had to pick a location. And, and because of timing and scheduling, I ended up picking Bali, which I visited many times and I love. I've uh -huh. yet been to Philippines and I love to be able to visit. So oh, then she God. told me, well, if you didn't, you didn't pick Philippines and your bucket list girl is going to the Philippines. I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn it. I mean, now like it didn't push through, so maybe next year we could make it happen. Oh, that's correct. So the Philippine trip actually got postponed because of the custom and visa and yeah, so forth. Um, so I want to learn about Philippines because you're Filipino. Filipina? Yes. Yes, Filipina. <laughs> and you were born in the Philippines, correct? I was. Yes. So you I was born, born there. Raised. I would, um, I grew up there and, you know, I, I went to school and finished college there. And then I moved to the States when I was 20. So that's three years ago. So oh, so just, you really grew up in the Philippines. Yeah, that's my home. That's like, Where is that Filipino, Filipino accent? Where is so that Filipino it's actually, accent? It's actually so funny because the minute I land in the Philippines, it comes out. The minute I speak to my mom on the phone, it comes out. It's just like, it depends on who I'm talking to, really. And the more that I'm in the States, the less you hear it. It's so funny how that works. I quite love it, though. I really do. It's such a unique pattern and sound. I love it. It's so sing-song, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. But yeah, well, um, I didn't realize that you moved here when you were 20. I thought that you left when you were really young. And just because you're... Everybody in Philippines, everybody speaks English, so everybody yes. knows yes. English is almost the first language and Filipino is like second. For sure, everyone speaks language. it there. You but, know? And yep. I have such a dear heart for Philippines because as you know, Asia Next Top Model and American Next Top Model show, it is like a craziest fan base in Philippines. And everybody says, you must come to Philippines. And I, I gotta say, I'm a little scared. I think I'm gonna get kidnapped and never be to come home. <laughs> no, it's super safe. I mean, it's like, it's like anywhere else. Like if you go to a dangerous like place or time, then you put yourself in danger, but it's really safe, you know? And funny people ask me if I'm Filipino or not. So when I'm with the Filipino, a Filipina, I'm Filipino. When I'm with a Hispanic, I become Hispanic. I kind of <laughs> melt into who yeah. everyone I'm with. Yeah. Because like you, I know in one of the interviews you talked about you are racially ambiguous in many yes. ways. Well, it's it's like something that I've been told, like in my book, people are like, oh, you look, you know, you look Hispanic here. And I even got Scottish ones. Like, I don't know how they got that, but people never know what I am just because like of my mix. So. And did you, did you have that kind of struggle growing up to find identity who you were as you were growing up? I, well, it was kind of confusing actually, because, you know, growing up, um, I am Filipino. I identify as Filipino. I, there's nothing else I identify as. And growing up, I was the white girl. 
Mm. It was like, I was Mestiza. I was the white girl. And I always thought, okay, I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm not Morena. I'm not, I'm, I'm not tan skin. So the minute I went to New York and they called me the Asian girl, I was like, mm. wait, hold on. I'm supposed to be the white girl. So <laughs> why, why am I suddenly the Asian girl? So I was really confused because the minute I stepped into US, I wasn't white enough. The minute I'm in the Philippines, I'm not Filipino enough. So it's like, it's was just that a difficult struggle. growing up? Was that difficult growing up? Or it, like, was there bullying in school? How was it in Asia? Because I grew up in Asia. I grew up in Taiwan. And yeah. everybody always said, you look mixed. You look mixed. Because I'm so tan. This is my natural color. Uh -huh. You know, so <laughs> I would come up with stories. I would tell people, oh, my mom is a native Indian. She's from the mountains. <laughs> and my dad's from China, from uh -huh. Russia. So I'm taller for Asian because yeah. of that. I would come up with so many rational irrational stories yeah. uh -huh. to convince other people that I fit in. Did you find yeah. that difficult? Well, I think there wasn't a lot of bullying for me, but I just sort of wanted to fit in. Like, mm -hmm. you, I tried everything to fit in and be one of, you know, like to not be considered as, um, different the, yeah different and you know that there there's not really any you know i went to an international school in high school and then in in grade school and then mm. I went to a public school in high school and that's where i struggled more because in my international school everyone was like me like they were all half Makes white sense. or they all spoke english but once i went to the high school um so in the Philippines, we have over 100 languages in every in different provinces. And in my local province, Pampanga, we speak, well, I don't, I don't speak it well. I know a few words because I asked my friends in high school to teach me because I wanted to fit in. Like they were all speaking this language and my mom's not from there. So, so she didn't teach me that language. So I, I was always like, please teach me. Like I want to be a part of this. And so it, that was just like, a good example of me just trying to always like find ways to fit in. Well, I don't think it's easy for somebody who's tall as you and beautiful as you to fit in. And I know it was it like an ever awkward stage for you growing up and you just like, I don't feel like this is the right skin for me. Hmm. I, I think I'm like, I'm really lucky enough that I came from a family like that was like really had my back and really supported me and really like reassured me. And, you know, there was a lot of love and all of that in the family that I, w I wasn't really, you know, I was happy with how I was because of what my parents like instilled in, in me. Oh, that's so, amazing. That's, yeah. no, that's awesome because I think generation gap is so hard sometimes when you come from a different country. And yeah. my family obviously grew up in Taiwan and coming here, mm -hmm. it's really hard to relate to your parents for about 10 years. It's a, it's a culture gap, yeah. it's a generation gap, that, that the communication part, it gets very confusing for them. You come home yeah. and you're like, you're reminded that you're Asian or you're Pacific Islander. And, yeah. and for the longest time, I was calling myself Pacific Islander and because I got into better colleges if I put Pacific Islanders. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I look like a Pacific Islander. Yeah, I no, you do. Oh in Taiwan, God. and it's <laughs> an island, and we are in the Pacific, so. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so you're full Taiwanese? I am. My father's from China, and okay. my mom but is he's He's Chinese, and Chinese. my okay. and my my mom is um, Taiwanese, Taiwanese, which is so but all Chinese, you know, it's all yeah, all Chinese. But you so, were born in Taiwan, and then you migrated to the U.S. when you yeah, were yeah, when I was about fourteen uh, or okay. maybe a little younger. I, I I lost track of time. I do remember it was on my birthday, May seventeenth, when we traveled here. So I oh. didn't get to celebrate my birthday on the plane. Yeah, but I, that was always the anniversary. Oh, how many years we've been in this country, yeah. you know, because it's fascinating to me about about you, because when I look at you, I do relate to you as an Asian person. And, and mm -hmm. I think in our industry, there's so little of it. And what's crazy yeah. is that in a population of Asians, there are more Asian than any other. Is it? Asian. 
Yes, of course. There's more Asians in this world than any other combination of, of race uh, and Asia origin. So China is, I mean, you know, how many millions of billions of people we have there. But yet the percentage of models that work in the international and in America and a Western culture is so mm -hmm. little. And yeah. so when I saw you begin to break ground, have many first in your personal journey, as well as for the industry, I was so proud. And that's when I said, I need to work with her. And, and because for photographers, we go through the same thing, right? Yeah. Um, well, like I looked in the uh, in magazines when I was in the early days of shooting and I would look for names I can register and go, oh, mm -hmm. there's an Asian photographer. Walter Chan was shooting Vogue in the 90s and, and oh, there's so-and-so. And, but there were very, very few. So you then begin to question, can I make it in this yeah. industry? You know, do you have that kind of struggle? Like, oh, oh I'm mixed. I'm not sure I'm white. And you, and we know how it is in fashion industry, right? You show up, some days you're too big, some days you're too skinny, some days you're yeah. too tall, some days you're too short. What was it like for you all of a sudden have to redefine yourself as not the white girl in America yeah. and go into fashion? <laughs> well, it was, it was really a struggle because it was always like, am I good enough? You know, am I pretty enough? Am I going to, you know, am I ever going to make it? And, you know, it, it's good now because in the industry, there are more Asian representation. So you're, and they're like, even with, I'm short, I'm short for um, a model. I'm like, you know, I'm five, eight, but that's short. <laughs> it's crazy to think it's, it's still short. But seeing like seeing other short models, I'm like, wait, okay, maybe I can do it. Maybe mm -hmm. it is possible. It's, it's the same for like being Asian or half um, half Asian. Like there are other people doing it. And so that means that maybe I can do it. So it's like for me to, you know, be the first of this and be the first of that, it paves waves for other people other Absolutely. people who look like me to be able to do it because they know that they can, you know? And in the interesting culturally in Philippine beauty contest is like massive. a phenomenon. It's oh massive. My God. <laughs> <laughs> and I got crazy. to meet Pia. I did meet Pia. Yeah? I got to work with her together. We were judges together on Asia Next Top Model. Oh yeah. She's absolutely gorgeous and lovely. She's so so beautiful. growing up in that culture, was it, it sounds weird, but to say, was it being beautiful very important? I think, you know, there, like, I'm not really interested in, you know, I'm really happy with where I am. But, you know, growing up, it was always like, would I, you know, school pageants and, it was did, always you, like did you do those? Did you do that? Yeah, I did. Oh, I want to see school. pictures. <laughs> so my, like my mom, I remember I was on stage and I remember crying on stage because I felt like my mom forced me. I'm like, I don't want to be here. And it's just like as a young kid, like it's just something that people expect you to just, you know, um, do. And I, you know, at the back of my head, it was always just like, wait, is, you know, what, do I want it? And it was just something that every Filipino, I think, you know, ha thinks about at one point. <laughs> it's, it's, but, yeah. it, it is a phenomenon. It, it, there's so many beauty pageant contests, there's so many modeling competitions, and, and, and so much is focused on aesthetic. It's, yeah. Do you see that world changing at all for the last few years? Has it evolved more into woman empowerment? Yeah. Uh, we know that happens in the Western world, that hashtag me too has happened and also accountability yeah. has happened in our industry a lot has that lead through the asia community in philippines yeah so i think it they've like they've i think progress more than just being a beautiful face now you have Love. to have an advocacy because you know it you, you you need a voice and that's you know that that's that happens in everywhere not just not just beauty pageants, but models too, and influencers too. Like, if you're given a platform and you have a voice, then people like ex expect a lot from you, and you do have a sense of responsibility. And what's nice now about those um, the beauty pageants is um, they're very heavily focused now on advocacies and charities and the um, good platforms things that, that the, you, yeah, yeah, like that, platforms, and and that's so good to hear because I know 
I listen. I come from a reality show all about beauty looks. and model yeah. and looks, <laughs> and and I'm the I, I'm number one a champion how the industry has evolved, accountabilities and responsibilities, and I love the way that you have phrased the responsibility part because, and you also call yourself an influencer right off the top of our interview. And I, I love hearing that because that word has become negative at times and it's yeah. starting to shift to a positive. I remember about five years ago and you would ask kids, I was at this school giving lectures and I asked kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, and throughout the years you hear about, I want to be an astronaut, I want to be the first female president. Yeah. But all of a sudden you get these kisses, I want to be a YouTuber. Really? I want to be an influencer. Yes. And I got to tell you, <laughs> five years ago, I'm going, oh my God, we're in trouble. <laughs> but you know what? I'm the first to say I'm wrong. Because when yeah. YouTubers, when influencers take those things in a positive way, have a platform, have an audience like you who captures a, a fan base, and you'll be able to use that to directly talk to them and deliver responsible information. Mm -hmm. I think it's so powerful, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's really like uh, influencers definitely have that responsibility. And, you know, it's just, it's it's a huge responsibility, especially if you're talking to a huge audience. That it's not, not just about everyone... what eyebrow product you use or what yeah. hair product. You know, I know everybody loves asking about how you get your gorgeous hair. I think people should ask about mine because they're pretty good these days. <laughs> Your skincare. I should get sponsorship after this quarantine. <laughs> what products do you use? <laughs> but, but in reality, it really is so good to know that you understand, and you're such a young girl still, and you understand my responsibility. You grew up in the industry understanding that we're influential and influencers are in a positive way. And I see you doing that through your social media. Do you feel pressure to always post things all positive because you have this most wonderful amazing smile and i love it Thank so you. when i go to instagram I, I i often do have to wonder what is her struggle what is what's yeah. her not living the best life today what is that day for you not yeah. living the best life like during quarantine or during, during any time career? because it's doing your career sure um i feel like you know, going back to responsibility, I feel like there has been, like Instagram sort of has been a thing where you only share the good things. And yes. I made it a point to like, <laughs> <laughs> like you only show the best parts of your life. And it's not being real and it's causing like anxiety for some people because they, when they, their lives aren't good, they feel like, they feel bad about themselves because they see in social media that everyone else's lives are amazing. And I feel like the responsibility comes back again to show people that not everything is always perfect, picture perfect, not, you know, like I share to people like some days I don't feel like working out. Some days I don't feel like, you know, some days I feel like shit and that's okay. Like, especially during quarantine, like we're living through a pandemic. You don't, you know, like this was something I shared um, a few days ago. I was like, I had, I felt anxiety because I feel like I was doing so much and I feel like I have to be doing so much with the time that I have. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just an example of like being real to your- Authentic. Uh, yeah. yeah authentic. Being truly authentic. And I, I, I will have to say, I appreciate influencers who are wanting to show me tears when there are bad days because we are looking at these content and they are, as much as we don't like to admit it, they are mirroring or reflecting our emotions throughout the entire day. There are people's feet I look at and I'll just smile. It doesn't matter what it is. And there are feet I look at and go, you know what? I can be a better person through this person's messaging. And, and, and you're right. It is our responsibility. And let's talk about responsibility for one second. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's about, about imagery. Uh, growing up in a beauty heavy concentrated country and focus and now you're in new york and you have college education so you got a nice old brain going on in there yeah. <laughs> which i love a smart model yeah. you know and and now you are now modeling you're doing lingerie shoes you're doing fashion shoes how do you feel in the way of your responsibility in this industry um well you know being with 
like sports someone like sports illustrated who celebrates body positivity and you know being inclusive of different body types and race and age and it's amazing to be um, associated with a brand like that because that like that's everything I stand for you know like I have stretch marks on my but and I am proud of showing that you know because it's normal it's in a girl's body there's nothing wrong with it like everyone has it's in guys bodies it. too guys yes <laughs> it's, you know it's like why should I be upset about my something that my butt you know made so um that's something that I feel like I am I have a responsibility to show my audience that okay I do lingerie I I do um, work out and try to be as healthy as I can to look how I am, to look how I am but I also show like I'm not perfect you know and and MJ and I had a conversation last week MJ Day Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Editor-in-Chief really have crafted the magazine into a woman's point of view the crew mm -hmm. are women and a lot of women photographer now shooting yes. for the magazine. So the perspective of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit is no longer from the 80s and 90s, just, just about body. It's yeah. really about utilizing the platform to share what their passion, what they're working on. And no, they're not perfect. And I think that's what makes this magazine so powerful and so unique mm -hmm. now. And I'm so happy you're part of the family. So let's jump into a little bit, a few moments of shoots that you have done. Oh, yay! Tell me where you were on this trip. So that was my rookie shoot at the Bahamas. Um, I was so excited for this one because it was my very first time with SI. And I was a, bit, I was a bit nervous because, you know, I didn't know how the shoots worked or I didn't know how the crew, um, I just didn't know how this, this setup worked. So I was just trying my best to show them that I deserve to be here and that, you know, um, just really try, like in everything that I do, I try to give my best work. And who was the photographer on that shoot? Do you remember? It was Loretta Houston. Beautiful. Um, so that she, was a woman photographer. Yes. So she and, shot yeah. the same trip as I did. She shot the the Tyra's cover for SI too. And how was that? Was that your first time working with a woman photographer? Um, no, I've worked with women photographer um, before, but actually. Um, it was a big deal because they really wanted um, she, you know, I feel like I have, I don't really see a lot of black women photographers mm. and it's important. Like SI really wanted to get someone, uh, a woman, you know, and black and Tyra pushed for it too. So it was really, it was nice that SI did that. Yeah, because diversity is not just what you see, right? It's about the mm -hmm. people behind it, the, the, the yeah. work ethic and the, the, the ethnicities and whatnot, and age as well. Thank God I yes. don't have an age out of SI yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> they love you so much. <laughs> well, I, I listen, these trips by SI are so fantastic and they're so beautiful. Now, I read somewhere that your mom at one point would not have approved you wearing a bikini. No, she still doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> It's my mom is the most conservative Filipino mom ever. Like, but yet I, she loves beauty pageants. Well, yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, if I post a bikini photo or a, a lingerie photo, she, I would immediately get a text from my mom, take it down, like delete that post. Up until now, she would still say that, and I'm like, oh my god, we've we've made so much progress, but so it's this just is a shot mommy would not approve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was a little scared for her to see the photos, but she's, you know, she's, she's always so supportive. But at the, at the start of my career, it was really hard to convince her to, like, to allow me to do swim shoots or lingerie shoots because it was just against all of her moral code. <laughs> Well, you are the first Filipina in Sports Illustrated. And in your career thus far, you have many, many firsts. And I, I, I love seeing you in the magazine. We had Jessica Gomes before as an Asian model from Australia that was in the magazine. Ooh. So for me, I have always championed to have more 
Asian models. And the struggle is yes. that it's not that we can't find the Asian model because culturally, a lot of Asian models are more conservative and yes. they are they 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 don't cross that line. To, <laughs> to, it's to a, it's a it's a fine line. <laughs> it is, but you know what? I don't think your mom would have proved five years ago what Sports Illustrated may have been. But now I think it's a complete different messaging. You have yeah. Kate Upton on the cover that everybody thought that was a plus size model. Oh my gosh, she, you know, and, and yeah. the fact that she, she's, she's a model, there's no label needed. And then you have Ashley Graham breaking the internet with her cover. And then you're in great company. You're an amazing company. And I know, they're amazing, inspiring women. And it's, it's like, even, you know, there's just, I can't believe I'm a part of this family. Was that part of your goal as a model that, I want to be the first, I want to be in this magazine and I'm going to it, work toward it. It was because there was no one before me. You know, I, when I first went to New York, there were not, there were a handful of Filipino models mm -hmm. and I wanted and I'll to- I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why from the industry side, I'm not sure you know, from the mm -hmm. industry side, if you came from pageantry, if you came from that world, the mm -hmm. fashion world kind of put their hand up and go, no, yeah. you're not a real model. No, 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 no. And and if you're coming from a culture that that beauty contests and beauty pageants do lead you into modeling, and when you start going over to US, it changes the dynamic and perspective. And also, I'm sure you were totally confused. You're like, this is a natural journey for me. This is what we yeah. do where I grew up. And yeah. and if you were presented to me five years ago as a beauty pageant girl who wants a model. It would be very hard for me to understand that because yeah. that's what the industry wasn't teaching me, wasn't educating me, saying, it's okay. It's okay to have, you know, it's okay to have, have beautiful, gorgeous pageant girls who can also model. I think you, the first to start breaking that, that, that mold as well. You, and, and it's, it's fascinating to me because in the U.S., in the Western culture, we have a lot of beauty pageant contestants and model may not have won the pageant transitioning to journalism yeah, transitioning yeah. Into hosting and but yet for some other for some reason in from asia to here that's just not as embraced and i hope that and i think you are i shouldn't say i hope you begin to change that conversation and that's amazing first yeah it's pretty it's pretty cool but in a way it's also like i feel like there's not a lot of Filipino models because like back then, like it was hard to get Filipinos to go to the States or there weren't really any people going mm. to the Philippines to scout models. And so now like okay. with technology and social media, it's easier to like just see a model. Like that's even how I got scouted by my um, agent. He saw my photos on Instagram and he invited me to go to New York when I was 18. Um, wow. And that's the, honestly the only reason why I'm even here in the first place because of Instagram. And if there wasn't any Instagram, like I, my, my agent wouldn't have seen my photos at all. And when you moved to the States, who was your first agent? Um, uh, Roman Young. Oh, he's watching Roman. right now. I see no, his hi, Roman. You know, Roman lives about three blocks that way. Really? Oh, wow. <laughs> about <one> neighbors. <laughs> No way. That's so and let's give a little shout out to Roman Young because Roman Young is yeah. a nomad management actually created together with Coco Rocha. And you guys, yeah. I'm sure know Coco Rocha. And she worked in Asia quite a bit and, and we love her in Asia. And when she formed a company with Roman Young to really representing Asian faces and, yeah. and now has expanded to all different faces. But really in the very beginning, it was Mostly something that was missing in the industry yeah. that you want to find Asian models. They were the one you go to because they know how to get the visa done, they yeah. you know, you trust them. Because listen, it was scary for, I'm sure, you're like, am I being trafficked? Am I? Yeah, this, that's, I mean, that's I'm always not joking about that. Head. It's really scary if you live in a country that is not predominantly accepted in this, this travel and modeling. Mm -hmm. It's it's like fish out of water, you know? And, and thank you for Agency Agri like Moment Young, um, Nomad, that they are really paving the way for a lot of um, great faces Asian. and Asian faces out there. And, and I use them all the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> they have the best Asians. <laughs> they're, they're lovely, amazing people. And, and, it's, and, and thank you, um, 
Coco Rocha for doing that for our community. So I appreciate it. I'm still waiting for them to sign me on the board. So <laughs> yeah, Rowan. <laughs> if you're <Yeah>. listening. <laughs> I'm about the same height as um, Kelsey. So um, I need, <laughs> yeah. I'm just a little darker and maybe a little bit more facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get your portfolio up. We'll work on that. We'll definitely <laughs> work on that. But yes, so I, I think the conversation has then really become international about responsibility. So do you feel as now, do you define yourself as an Asian model? Yes. I love that. Because and do you I, feel pressure what you have to do differently as a white model versus versus an Asian model? Hmm. <laughs> so, you know, there's just so many like there's so many things that being an asian model you still have you know you covers or there's so many things that a lot of asians still haven't done and you know mm -hmm. it's all about breaking barriers and um being paving the way for people and that might not be me but you know i've i'd like to think i've done some help to that but um, for sure, being an Asian model has um, sort of, like you said, responsibilities to it to help with like. You're representing. People. Yeah, you rep are. representation for sure. And and you are you are someone people are looking at now uh, and as inspired by and inspired by you now have no newfound responsibility of everything that you do, not just as a woman as an Asian woman and culturally Asia is so big there's so many different way people think what an Asian woman should be right yeah and, a lot and of or Asian, Asian men like we definitely have stereotype that everybody <laughs> try to make us fall into that that box and I broke yeah. every stereotype there is possibly can be for Asian <laughs> person so. yeah <laughs> so I don't really fall into that box maybe that's why everybody's like you're not Asian, or you're not, you know. Yeah, because they think there's only one type of Asian, but there's not. There's so many. That's because the movie portrays us that way, I guess. <laughs> you know, yeah, Hollywood, we all know Hollywood. kung fu, and every <laughs> Filipino and Filipina are very good in karaoke. That's yeah. the stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's kind of true because your language naturally sing song, and the, the, <laughs> so, I'm sure you can bust out an amazing song in a karaoke. We love our karaoke. <laughs> Listen, guys, in buses in Asia, they carry karaoke machines. They are, they are taxis equipped with karaoke machines. I'm not joking. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, so it's don't knock the karaoke. <laughs> Uber <laughs> driver and Lyft driver who can sing a karaoke, they get big tips and five stars for sure. <laughs> well, let's, sure. Talk about the, let's talk about the next first. This is a moment that I'm sure you remember. Yeah. So let's talk about this moment, Victoria's Secret. How did it come about and how did you land yourself on that runway? That was my dream of, I don't know. It's just sort of, it happened so quick. I moved to New York in 2017 and that happened in 2018. Oh. And, um, and that just, doesn't happen for everyone, you guys. That <laughs> actually doesn't really happen for everyone. <laughs> I just think like it's all about timing like if that was my very first time to cast for the vs show and i just like i'm a firm believer in like the law of attraction and mm. you know, manifestation and my when i was in so when i was still in the philippines when i was still in college the whole time i was like i'm one day i will walk the victorious like i was manifesting it it would you know it was always been my dream, but I felt like it was tangible. Like, mm. you know, it's, you have to dream big, but, well, no, not buts, like just dream big, dream crazy. <laughs> like I'm, I'm a girl from a small town in the Philippines. Like, how is this gonna work, you know? Um, and, you know, I work hard, like really like putting in the hard work and it just got me there. <laughs> And for those people trying to understand what she mean by putting the hard work, VS does have a standard that they look for with their models, certain high, certain ways, certain, whether or not you agree with their standards, they have them. And they yeah. see thousands of girls, like Lex Sports Illustrated, 
you see thousands of girls and you have to be there at the right time at the right of your peak of your perhaps your professional imperfections yeah. and that they fall in love with you and it's a very judgmental process and and i've been through those castings i've seen the process it is not easy and so when people say they work hard for it i always want to remind everyone that mentally they have to work hard for it physically yeah. you guys are blessed some people are very blessed with the height blessed with the legs but you really do have to mentally mentally be ready for it. i know girls who audition over and over and over and six years later five years later or it yeah. never happened but they can still realize that that's not a rejection to them it's yeah. just they want the right fit at that time now yeah, yeah. vs has really changed its message in the last three years and yeah. i couldn't be happier this change has happened and there are a lot that does not take away from anything that you have done for vs being the first but i do remember that year was also the first time i landed on the red carpet for the oscars interviewing celebrities and wow. it was the year that asian were hot we were the yeah. hot Come oh yeah because the crazy rich asians came that uh what came out that year <laughs> yes and and so if we ever got to use our race car that was the year <laughs> <laughs> well so that's the thing like i feel like it's a mix of the hard work and the right time because yeah. like you know it, i feel like around that year everyone was more accepting of asians and well, you know for VS, they, let me say when it happened can i tell you mm -hmm. i was proud that you were there and my reaction was about as time, time. Right? <laughs> about time because yeah. it it was so shocking to me that that there's so many rules they have set and for photographers from from behind the scenes from from models the perspective that, that they put out there it wasn't the healthiest at the time and yeah. i've been through it i shot with them for in the past and i know the culture i understand what was right and what was wrong but much of it we can't do anything about however it was my bucket list it was my dream it was it was me dreaming big like you mm -hmm. like my dream is shoot for Victoria's Secret. My yeah. dream is shoot for Guess. My dream is shoot for Sports Illustrated. I'm yeah. a boy who is a farmer's child. I was not raised in a rich, opulent home that photography was a hobby, which a lot of photographers do become that because photography yeah. is expensive. Yeah. You know, and sure. and I I dream big. I dream bigger and bigger, and because of that, I think it happened. I shot for all three of those brands for twelve years for. For guests and for for Victoria's Secret was short run, and there's a whole different conversation about that. <laughs> different, 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 <laughs> but but I got to check that off on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. And BS, I'm living the dream every single year when I get to I'm here on Let's Talk with you, as well as being on these incredible trips, yeah. and and now collaborating with MJ Day, the editor in chief, on um, raising money and bringing masks to the first responders. I could never dream of that. A boy from Taiwan moved to Indiana, Terry Hill, Indiana, where we're the only Asian people in the entire town. Mm -hmm. And to then move to California and to have this, my dream back in the day was the future farmers of America, guys. I was like FFA, I was gonna be a farmer, I was gonna work on a farm and breed pigs and, and Yeah, and that was like you know, that's the life. But 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 I love that you 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 said that. It is doesn't matter where you're from, you dream big. You yeah. dream, dream big. Well, I hope that VS Show does find itself a new footing. And I do think that it itself had created a lot of magical moments for, for us who watch and for models who hit those runway. And what was going through your mind every step of the way when you were on that runway? I, so we found out we got the show two months before the show. Two months? Yeah, two months before the show. I was just so, so excited and I couldn't wait for it to happen that when it happened, I was just like, it's finally happening. And the energy in the backstage was just so amazing. Everyone was hyping each other up. And I remember going out on the runway. I was just so, I was filled with so much happiness and I was just so happy and excited. and. I just loved that I was there. It was just, you know, it's hard to explain, but the energy was just like electrifying. And yeah, it just, 
I ended it. <laughs> you miss you miss it. You miss that moment. Yeah, there's nothing like it. There's honestly nothing I've ever done in my life that is close to what that energy was like. Well, that was the there's first. another one. <laughs> I'm sure there will be. There will be many others since you are you're a pioneer. You're you're a wave maker. You're 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 breaking boundaries. You're breaking glass ceilings of people what what people think things should be. And that's that to me was the most important conversation I wanted to have with you. I want people to yes. know that you're not just a model slash influencer. And yes, we're using a platform here to talk about Sports Illustrated and your achievements. Mm -hmm. But truly, it's about the ability what you can do from this point forward. So some of the questions that came in that people want to know, yeah. uh, I, I did I did take out what product you use for your hair. And what <laughs> <laughs> I did take those questions out. So some of the questions, here's a couple of questions for you. Okay. So what is, now you have done the first of uh, VS, first mm -hmm. of SI, what's your next first you would like to conquer? I mean, I feel like it's every model's dream, but I would like love to land a major cover. Like, low. You haven't shot a major cover? No, I have not. I want to What? You say. What? <laughs> I did not know this. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> now I know. You know Help what? Sister out. <laughs> and, and you know what? If if I could be in any way to assist that that dream come true, I will be honored to be there for that. Because I have always been such a proponent to actually have an Asian supportive community. And, and I don't know you experienced this, but truthfully, Asians support each other as much as you would think they would. It because we grew up in such a competitive nature. Mm -hmm. uh education that you want to be the only you want to be the first of something you want to be the only one there so i find it very hard to find asians in our community actually support each other when they do it's incredible like aya uh, was the editor-in-chief of marie claire magazine now i've seen her from cosmo all the way up we've worked together for many years and i always look at her and i said you are rarity and she goes what do you mean this is, this is how things should be i go trust me there's a list of asians who don't support you <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, and 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 I'm yeah. actually really proud to wish to you know, the magazine world actually embrace their own more in a way of Japanese Vogue. I know it's Anna De La Rosa's magazine, but can we please use Japanese photographer put Japanese model on that cover instead of pretty much French Vogue? That's my opinion. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you yeah. know why? Why isn't that all these Asian publications put 99% of white people on the cover, but magazine like Vogue Thailand and Harper's Bazaar Singapore, I shoot for on a monthly basis. I can tell yeah. you that they're very Asian empowered and relevant, not just because we have to put Asian people on the cover because we're Asian magazine. They're relevant. They're making relevant point of views. And, and yeah. I know you have an amazing point of view and you're growing and, and your time and your prime has yet to come. Please, oh, that you. cover shoot is just around the corner. And maybe- <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> maybe cover on SI. Manifest it. Yes, and I'll manifest with you. Because my goal has always been to be able to create a shoot. And I talked to MJ about this before too, is to actually have Asian all Asian crew. I would love an Asian hair and makeup team and Asian well, manicure, we all stereotype, but all Asian do manicure, so that's easy <laughs> one to fill. <laughs> we do nail. <laughs> we do nail. <laughs> but, but, um, but I think that's so empowering because cause we're, so, we're so international now. And be able to inject a little bit of who we are that for centuries and centuries being Asian people, we're not going anywhere. And, yeah, and be able to put that forward. And that's why... I think our trip will happen. I know I know MJ knows. I know she's watching and <laughs> she knows how important we gotta it is. We got to make it happen. But I actually did shoot Juju on my trip in, in Bali. Bali and oh and I you know that was that was my gift from her. She's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry Kelsey already confirmed to go to the Philippines and the schedule wise doesn't work, but we we'll give you Juju." So I I was, I was awesome. very happy. And and just be able to be there with her and that was her first too, right? Yeah, she came, she came from the world so that beautiful. nobody nobody thought she was sexy. That she wanted to do VS so badly, and she now is a VS model. So yeah, I really has paved roads not for careers only.
the confidence, right? It's truly about yeah. that confidence. I think that's what people don't don't understand about this magazine as much as we do because we're a family. That it is that that knowing you dream, you can achieve it. Then you can dream again and again. Yeah. And boy, that's what you have done. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. I can't、yeah. wait for us to create the next verse together. I know. I want to. That's that would be amazing. Well, I promise you. Support each other. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. What's on your bucket list? What's on your bucket list? Bucket list. Not career-wise, but bucket list. What's in that little bucket list of yours? Like anything under the sun. You want to be a movie star? <laughs> I mean, I'm open to it. <laughs> <laughs> Start dreaming. I don't see why. I'm already、not. in in LA. Why not? And I'm in LA. I can't believe that we're both in LA and we are so far apart from each other. <laughs> no, LA is so big, though. It's so big. But I do <laughs> encourage you to expand to that world because I do think that 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 you have that natural charisma and you have an amazing, amazing energy, and that we need more in this industry. And we definitely need to see more Asians on television because、For、I、sure. gotta turn on the TV and not just look at Golden Girl. Think I relate to them because I feel like I'm old. I need to look at it, <laughs> Asian. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I feel you know? Like, like you know, there's only crazy rich Asians. Like, what other Hollywood Asian movie is there? We got Crouching Tiger, Hand Dragon. So that means we all know how to do karate. And then we got animated Kung Fu Panda. So we're、oh, all cute、yeah. and funny. I'll tell you a funny thing before I let you go is that when the movie Crazy Asians came out, I got so、mm-hmm. many DMs, and they were to me. So incredibly insulting, but they were my friends, so I know they didn't come from there. Literally,、yeah. would say, I didn't realize Asian people were funny. What? I was like, okay, I need to take a pause on your DM. I'm gonna block you for a few days. Because... <laughs> need to cool off. Well, I kind of responded. Well, I didn't think white people were so ignorant about Asian people. <laughs> Is that okay for me to say to you when you can say that to me? Yeah, but those、crazy. boundaries are being broken, and with you're making waves, and I want to be on that wave with you and ride that wave. And I'm so proud of you. And welcome to the Sports Illustrated family. And I can't wait for us to create together. Me too. It was well, thank、amazing. you so much for、thank、being、you. here today. The conversation. Thanks for having、nice. me. So for you guys, if you missed this and you're only getting a tail of it, it will be live on IGTV for 24 hours, and we will have this on YouTube as well, and we'll share the content with Kelsey so she can share with you guys. And yes, you guys have any questions at all, please DM her and any ideas what we should do together. I think we should do it because you know what,、yeah. your fan base and my fan base, combined forces. It was gonna get kind of a little crazy. You know what? <laughs> And when I do go to Philippines, I think I need you to take me. <laughs> I need you to take me to Philippines. Oh, I'll take you to my home. I'm so so worried. When I said I'm worried about getting kidnapped, it's because when I was when I'm in Asia, the fan base are insane. They're crazy. They grab you. They hold on to you. They just come up and hug you. If I was there, I would get COVID right now because <laughs> you know, the love is crazy. And then we love the love. We love the love. Well, you guys, thank you so much for joining me again, and what a lovely conversation to have with you. And you know what, out there, guys, keep talking, keep the spirits up. We're gonna get through this. And you know what, if you have a little bad day, just click on Kelsey's Instagram. She'll put a smile on your face, guys. <laughs> Thanks, oh, the Asian、guys. way. The Asian way. <laughs> <laughs> love you. <laughs>